Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything NFL Gambling Picks for week number 10. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Stuff sounds so good, man. So good. We're into double digit weeks for the NFL. You're doing okay. Okay. You're doing okay. You're okay. 22 and 22. You're up 4.04 units. I am 20 and 27. I am down 12.18 units. That means that my favorite bets ain't hitting. It's not a good <laughs> we'll, thing. Uh, come on now. Not we'll, a good we'll get thing. It together. So last week. I went two, two and one, lost fifty nine dollars and nine cents. You went one and three. Bad week. Lost a uh, hundred nine dollars and nine cents. So it's time for us to get off the uh, off the schneid a little bit. I'm at the Mason Dixon line. Yes, you are. You're still up as far as money goes. Yeah. That's better than me. Yeah. Better than me. Of course, the show is Winning Cures Everything. You can find us over at winningcureseverything dot com. Everything about us is over there. Facebook, mm-hmm. Twitter, YouTube, podcasts videos, different articles that we write, rankings, all sorts of different stuff that we put up on that site. You can go check it out for yourself, winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave some comments, tell us what your picks are this week. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, tell us what we got wrong, what we should be looking at, what we haven't been looking at. To Help us make some money. Help us make some money because this has not been a good year in college or the NFL. So easy with the name calling though. Our names are like right below the screen, so you know which one we are. <laughs> Come on now. It's it's not been a good year for me, but it, this ain't been your best year either. No, it hadn't been my best no. year, but in in the NFL, have, we don't have to have the name call. Nobody. When I go through the comments, nobody <laughs> calls Gary names ever. Yeah, no, man. That's a. I don't know what. I think it's. I know what it is. <laughs> Have to say it. Let's just it's go. it's pity is what it is. This is wrong. It's pity. No, because they all see how badly I'm doing. That's not it. Uh, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. They won't call you names down in Tunica, uh, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They always got great stuff in the works down there. It is a wonderful trip. If you are from out of town, you want to come in, fly into Memphis, take you an Uber down. Stay at one of their lovely casinos. They're all fantastic. We recommend all of them. Go check it out for yourself, tunicatravel.com. Let's fire in. NFL gambling picks for week number 10. I got five. You got four, right? I got four. You got four. I will start us off then. I'm going to start off on Thursday night. I'm going Chargers and Raiders. The Raiders are an underdog. I thought it was a pick em. It opened to pick them. It is Raiders plus one currently. And I just checked this out an hour and a half before now. Yeah, go on. Check it out. But Raiders plus one. They're at home. The Chargers looked great last week. Looked great against the Packers. The Raiders also got a win, though. Raiders have looked pretty good all year. I think that the Raiders get this done. I don't trust the Chargers yet. I mean, they they fired their offensive coordinator. They looked great last week. I think it was a one-week aberration. I'm going to go with the Raiders plus one as a home underdog. 50 bucks at minus 110 here. I think that they win the game outright. I lied. I'm going to do five. I did five last week because I got to have my – I didn't do five. Did I? Anyway. You did I gotta, four last week. I got to do it for the Super Contest. Yeah. If I'd have picked another one, I'd have probably lost it. <laughs> anyway, I, didn't do, I didn't do well last week, but I'm going against you on that. Okay, and let me and let me tell you why. I really like, I, and it is minus one. You were exactly right. It moved off that point. Pick them. Um, I think the change of OC is a drastic change in in the Chargers organization. I think this offense is going to look far different than it's looked all year, and uh, I like that they. Man, I know it's an interim kind of thing, and you know we're not hiring people right now. But but this is a young kid, and he's aggressive. And you yeah. know how much I like that. I just like aggression. I, I'm going to tell you this. I actually think Gruden's going to kind of like this kid because he likes young, aggressive, like you know, guys that just aren't afraid to to get after it and put themselves out there. It's it it could go badly if the Raiders' defense, you know, when you're when you're too aggressive too early, it, it could always end badly. 
the Raiders just don't have one of those defenses that scare me. I think this is going to be a higher scoring game than we what we use, are used to on Thursday nights. Man, I'm having a hard time getting words out. <laughs> and uh, I understand, but but I I like the Chargers in this game, and I think they're going to win this game. So okay. I'll, I'll take you. I'll go head to head with you on that. Well, we can. Uh, we I'm going to put seventy five on all of mine. All of mine. Seventy five. So let's just make make your job easy. I won't be doing crazy stuff. Well, that sounds good to me. I got to have five for super contest. So. Well, that 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 sounds uh that sounds totally reasonable. Next up for me, we might be looking at this the same way. I'm going Bills plus three at the Browns for fifty bucks. I don't know how the Browns could be favored against a good team at all, and I, like I could see them being favored against not good teams. Define that. Define not good. I mean, Jets. If they got to play the Dolphins? Jets again. Oh, I don't know about that. You don't think they'd be favored against, or you don't think they should be favored against the I Dolphins? Don't think, I don't think it's a gimme win for the Browns if they play the Dolphins. That's right crazy now. to me. <laughs> that is Name absolutely the absurd. the in the NFL right now that you think are playing worse than Baker Mayfield. Because Fitzmagic ain't one of them. Sam Darnold. That's okay. I gave you the Jets. But I think Fitz, Fitzpatrick, we, we, we yeah, you're probably right. We on the Jets. Ah. Haskins, is Haskins now a quarterback? He's not as good as Baker. Okay. But that, I mean, that might be the list. That might be the list. When, when dudes are coming off the couch, this guy was not, the guy from the Broncos was on the scout team. Like, there's nothing to back yeah. up. Like, he's just like a dude that they just think, okay, maybe he can play because our backup's just not ready yet. Yeah. I mean, no, that's totally not reasonable. all teams carry three quarterbacks. This was a practice squad guy. Yeah. So I, I, that came I, in and not just outplayed him, outplayed the hell out of him yeah. with half of the skill players involved. Not close. Listen, I love, I, I love Lindsey. Love Lindsey. Okay. He's not Nick Chubb. No. Okay? You, you, can, you can really like, uh, 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 what's his name? Sorton, uh, Cortland Sutton. I knew I was going to get that wrong. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You can you can like him all you want. He's not Odell. He's not Landry. No. He's not those guys. They don't have anywhere close to the offensive firepower that Baker has. He came in and outplayed the hell out of him. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I I think the list is one team would be easily easily dogged to the Browns. And that's about it. And I think that's the Jets. So this line kind of stinks, right? It does. It, uh, this is going to be the most public line there is. We're walking right into it. We're walking right and into I, it. And I don't, I don't care because it, there's oh, just no care. way no. that it makes F sense. It. I'm done. Yeah, there's no way that it makes sense to not bet against the Browns I as a favorite. I could not be more out on Freddie and Baker. And I've made that clear. And This isn't a new thing, by the way. We were week three, and I'm in the game against the Rams, and I'm telling everybody around, these guys don't know what they're doing. It's, uh, watching watching Pat McAfee talk about this on Get Up yesterday, when he said, you know, these guys in this locker room, like Freddie Kitchens is somebody you'd love to have a beer with, but the guys in the locker room know he stinks, is what he said. But he it, said he stinks. But but it's not just Freddie. It's not 100%. It's a lot on Freddie. Don't it's, get me wrong. Yeah, but I think. Baker is playing Badly. He's yeah. missing guy. He they had one or two drives in that game against the Broncos where he looked good, where he was hitting guys in stride. And then we get to the red zone, and a lot of it is play calling. But then, man, they did call a couple passes in there, and you didn't hit, hit the mark then. And so now you're settling for field goals. He he's just as bad as Freddie. Yeah. I I think there's massive bust potential here. Oh, yeah. And the, and the problem is it's real easy to fold on Freddie. I know this has turned into a Browns thing and my little therapy session, but you got him. It's easy to fold on Freddie. It would be real easy to fire Freddie at the end of the year. How long do you hang on to Baker? Because if we got a Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota situation where we're going to give him all five years, then Miles Garrett, Odell, Landry, all these guys that are unbelievable young talent, they're all gone. They're all gone by then. And now you're starting over from scratch. I mean, you you got a valid point. No, is this also one of your picks? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, bills sir. plus three. Bills plus three, seventy five dollars. There's just no way I'm putting one more brown, one more nickel on the Browns this year. 
Now that that makes perfect sense. Uh, of course, don't forget we've got TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He's the Tampa Bay Bucks sideline reporter. We got him coming up at the end of the podcast. Uh, and also, if you haven't already, go get your picks in for the weekly pick'em contest. Last week, Denise went eight and two, won the tiebreaker. She uh, she won a one night stay at Sam's Town and twenty five dollars in free play. We got all sorts of prizes. Go check out this week's prizes. The pick'em contest is already up. Go enter in. It's super simple. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Click on football picks contest and enter in your stuff. Pick number three for me. Cardinals at the Bucks. I'm taking the Bucks minus four and a half here. Uh, it opened at six. It has been bet down. I'm putting $75 on this. I think there are certain spots where you have to know when to bet on the Bucks. I think this is one of them. They are coming home, haven't been home since the middle of September. I think this is the time that you bet on them. They're going to look better. I I like Mike Evans against this defense right now. I like I don't like Jameis. But I think the Bucks defense can get stops against this Cardinals offense. I don't like Jameis. But I do like Mike Evans. And Mike Evans will make Jameis look pretty good sometimes. I mean, this team went to the wire with the Seahawks last week. That's right. They're going so, to the wire with everybody. You know, they're, I think, at home against a team that is still kind of trying to find their way. Completely agree Cardinals, are, they've looked pretty good. Yep. It's been a pretty good first year for Cliff Kingsbury. I think if the season ended now, you say this is a win. Yeah. Good hire, good draft. Yeah, absolutely. So I am rolling with the Cardinals here, and with the uh, with the Bucks against the Cardinals. Uh Bucks minus four and a half, seventy five dollars here. I'm going to go the other way, and I'm going to tell you why. It's not that I don't think the Bucks can win this game, and I absolutely, absolutely didn't think they do. I, I think they can't. Holy shit! I have gone off the rails with the <laughs> talk tonight. Let me tell you what: every Bucks game, if they win, and half of them when they lose, they're all field goal games. They're all field goal games. When yeah. I saw this was over a field goal, I said, "I'm just taking it." I'm just that taking the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are going to play them close. <clears throat> I think they've got an offense that can score with anybody. I didn't look at the over-unders. This is a game I'm probably going to bet the over. I don't know how big it is. I almost don't care. <clears throat> I know it's got to be in the 50s. Yeah, I think it's like 50, 51. 51, 52. Yeah, yeah, the NFL just doesn't get too high crazy like that. But but there's no reason both these teams won't score 25 points. Yeah, I don't think either of these defenses are great. I actually like Tampa Bay's defense, but the problem they have – is they got to defend short fields all the time because Jameis gives people the damn ball. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about that on defense. So you just you give up a play or two, and you, and, you, and you give up points, and that happens. I think the Cardinals have I – th- I absolutely believe this is a coin flip football game, and I get more than a field goal. And all I wanted to see was, is, is it a field goal game or not? And if it yeah. was three and a half points or better, I was taking the cards. That makes sense. That, I mean, that 100% makes sense. I'm, I can understand where you're coming from. I think the Bucks went by a touchdown. Yep. So, we'll, uh, we'll go head-to-head on it. I like it. Next up for me, game number four, the Giants minus one and a half at the Jets. I almost bet this, but I figured I'm going to let you have it. Well, here's the deal. Whenever we agree, I think we're over on the year, by the way. It, it definitely feels like that. I don't so, think we're over, so I, but we're pretty I, close to I, it. I'm staying away from that completely. The only thing that gives me pause is the Giants love to turn the football over. Yeah, but not to the Jets. But I don't think, I don't think the Jets know how to take it away. They do. The Jets' best player <clears throat> that would probably take it away is really pissed off right now. So, Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Not, that's not good. Not good? No, it's definitely not. Um, I do think the Giants are a better team. You know, you got Saquon Barkley back. Le'Veon Bell has not looked good by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> uh, that Jets defense Excuse me. hurt. Yep. You know, I mean, they just got guys out. They got, you know, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, I just, I don't know what the odds makers are seeing every week with this team. If you're not a fan of one of these teams, there's no reason whatsoever to watch one second of this football game. No. I don't I'll care. watch it on red zone. I don't care how often they're in the red zone. They... The red zone should make a call right now that we're just not putting this on. We're just not showing this highlight. Man, I got fantasy players. <laughs> this is a problem. You drafted those fantasy players. No, I had to get damn free agents for guys that are on buys and everything. I, I got golden tape from the Giants. Oh, I'm not, I'm not it kidding. It ain't great. I, I had he number, did help I, me win last I night, I had the though. number one overall pick in two different leagues, luckily. It's never happened before that I'm in. 
in both of them, I refused. I refused to take Saquon. I don't blame you. I had the number three pick in the league, and he was still there, and I didn't take Saquon. And not because he's not deserving of it whatsoever. I took Chubb, by the way. Not at three. Yes, sir, I did. You Good did. You, Lord. You did well, right, I, guess, I did. Guess what? Yeah, he's he's worked out okay. Was I right? No, you, you yeah. I mean, he's better than just Barkley check. for sure. Just check. Um, and, and let me tell you why. I refused for my number one pick to be somebody I'm not going to want to watch. And it's not because of him, because he is explosive. Yeah. They are it, so that damn, team is. They are so damn boring. Yeah. Last night I watched the first half. I saw the little cat running around. When it turned halftime, I turned it off. I went to the shower. I went to bed. I was, I was in bed by like 9.30, 9.45. That, uh. It was incredible. It, I'm sure it was pretty nice. Such an old man. <laughs> Either way, taking the Giants minus one and a half at the Jets. Uh, who have you got for your fourth pick? My fourth pick. I'm taking the Carolina Panthers plus five okay. against the Packers in Green Bay. And here's my lead, uh, my logic. It's going to be a long night, brother. Yeah, that's what it seems like, but that's all right. <laughs> here's my logic. I think we are finally seeing the, the pieces of the armor fall away for the for the Green Bay offense. It was a bad time. They have not looked good all year, but that defense has just been mowing people down, and Aaron makes just one or two big enough plays to get the win. And in a home crowd environment, absolute home crowd environment in L.A. against the Chargers, a defense that has not been great, and an offense that has been putrid. Yeah. They they gave up massive amounts. And, Aaron Rodgers says, oh, well, I think we went out partying. Hey, if the guys are going out partying midweek because they're in L.A. That That's is, a problem. That is not a good – and I know they're not partying in Green Bay. You know where to party. But the issue is that's a character problem. Yeah. That's a pride problem. That is a I don't take my job serious problem. And we're into the part of the season where you don't get to just moonwalk into these games and hope that Aaron can save you. You have a very valid point. And so I find a good defense, a young quarterback whose team just said, hey, you're our guy for the rest of the season, baby. Cam, I are. He's done. Yeah. He's he's all but released. This is your barbecue. Let's cook. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like I, it. I think the Panthers have a chance to win outright. Packers go 0-2 in the last two games. They might not, but if it's close, I think I'll, I like my chances of this being a close game. I can 100% understand that. 100%. Go ahead. Next up for me, game number five, last one. I'm going to Monday night. I'm going to Monday night, and I think it's too many points. And I've, I've done okay betting against the 49ers in certain spots this year. I'm going I'm to do it again. Seahawks plus six. Monday night football game. That's, is that what? It's a fantastic Monday Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I, I thought you said it's a bad one. I was like, fantastic. I was just like, a, no, just amazing. Yes, this they they scheduled this one well, uh, at the 49ers in San Francisco, well in Santa Clara, but Seahawks plus six. It's a lot of Seahawks points. pretty good, and and they've actually looked a little better on the road than they have at home. Now, yes, the 49ers still undefeated, all that kind of mess, but. Everybody loses eventually. That's right. So, if you're going to lose, it more than likely is somebody in your division that has the athletes to be able to do it. I think the Seahawks have a good running game. I think Russell Wilson has obviously been playing like an MVP all year long. I agree. And they got Josh Gordon now. I don't know that Josh plays this week, but okay. he may not. I was I was tossing it in because it sounds good. I, I'll but, tell you this: I don't know that they need. I don't, no, I don't think they do. D- DK and, and – Oh, and, DK uh, Metcalf was unbelievable. And, unbelievable. Uh, and Lockett are just oh. unbelievable. And then Chris Carson. Amazing. Yeah. I like that pick too. Listen, I'm not I'm not stepping in front of the 49ers again for a minute. I'm just going to – I'm going to back off. Just just a touch. I'm 50 bucks on that one. Yep. So, That's good. who uh, who you got I, for your I last? Like I'm, I'm going to Dallas, baby. I'm going to Dallas. And I'm bringing my Minnesota Vikings. All I'm right. Dallas. I'm taking plus three. I think Minnesota's going to win this game. I, I, I could, yeah. Dallas beats up on bad teams. I really thought about this. Dallas beats up on bad teams. And then it, you got the Vikings in a dome. Yeah. Kirk I, Cousins. I, I never care about that. Kirk Cousins played his entire career outside. And now he now he's played one season in a dome. All of a sudden, now he's a dome guy. 
Yeah, but uh, just the Vikings overall look yeah. better in domes. Yeah, I mean, it's like just, it's just it's, it's ridiculous. I don't understand why the numbers work the way they do. Kirk Cousins, but they do. even even in that loss, Kirk Cousins like passer rating was pretty pretty incredible last week. Yeah, I mean that like he's still good. They're still good. They're he's playing his best football. That offense is rolling. I trust that defense to make stops, and and I I I just think this Dallas team's flawed. Yeah, I could so I could one hundred percent. I bought that. in so early. So hard, so fast on Dallas, and I think that's I think that's a little backlash from I've hated on them for so long, and they impressed me early that I was like, I'm all in, I'm all in. This is a really good Dallas team. I just felt like I needed to do that. I didn't need to do that. <laughs> They're not that good. This is this is buying back a little bit. Yes. So I can understand it. All right. Of course, you can go over to Winnie Cures Everything, find our gambling picks up there. Everything for the last four seasons. Everything that we have ever picked is right up there on the website. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to the gambling picks section. It is super easy to find all of our spreadsheets. They didn't look as good back then as they do now. It looks a lot more organized now than it was. We didn't, I didn't really know how to work with them spreadsheets. Come on, man. But you now I know. Work in this? Now I know. You got so, full-time jobs outside of this? Come it's on. tough. We it's tough. We so we, uh, we do the best we can, but I, you can still see everything. That's right. You can see it You're all. Right, anything. Every pick we have ever made, you can see it on the website. So go check it out. These picks will, of course, be up there very, very soon. But as for right now, the man himself, the living legend from Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Bucks sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, he is TJ Reeves. He is TJ Reeves. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, which you can grab at any of your favorite podcast apps. TJ, how did the Bucs uh, uh, lose that game last week, man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been traveling Just all over the world. On. You go to yeah. Seattle. I mean, tell me, tell me what happened here. Don't beat around the bush next time. Just come right out and hit me between the eyes on the Winning Cure show. It's bad enough that I had to be there field level as as Russell Wilson uh, ripped our collective heart out and stomped on it uh, with He's the comeback in the second half and in the overtime. Uh, and I'm here to testify – uh, here on Winning Cures, that he's he's phenomenal in person at field level. I've had the chance to see him now numerous times at field level, and that Sunday in that loud environment, I mean, you you watch that game and you wonder how they ever lose there with him and with that crowd. It's incredible because the Bucks had him on the ropes, had him, and I kept saying the entire time, this guy's a magician. You're never out of the game, and but you know, bottom line is that uh, the Wilson and the Seahawks are, are amazing at home, and we'll see if it translates for them on the road on Monday Night Football uh, coming up. But it was uh, it, it was tough, and, and my Bucks have been on the road so long, I don't think they remember where Raymond James Stadium is. But we are allegedly, possibly going to play a game there for the first time in seven <laughs> weeks against the Cardinals on Sunday. Yeah, it has been a very, very long time. I, I like you, Bucks, this week. I, I do. Now, Chris doesn't. But that's all right. You I just know? don't against the spread. It's just too big. <laughs> he that's said it's all. just too many points. You're saying you don't, you don't dislike me in general. You just don't like the spot here with Arizona coming in. Of course, that's Bruce Arians' former team yes. in, uh, in this matchup. And uh, the Cardinals with Kyler Murray as the number one overall pick. And so there's some, uh, there's some p- subplots, some intrigue for this matchup coming up. There's no doubt. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's talk about Thursday night really quick. Interesting line here. Chargers yes. have not looked very good. The Raiders are at home. The Raiders are a one-point underdog. Is this something that you might be talking about on Three Dog Thursday? On and so, Thursday? That, so, so correct me if I'm wrong. Has that line switched in the last couple of days? Because I thought initially the Chargers might have been the one-point underdog, and you're saying now at the time that we're taping that the Raiders are actually the underdog. The Raiders I'm are the dog. Trying. Right now. The Raiders are the dog, and they were at the beginning. They were the dog as no, well I, when this thing opened. A, I, I thought it was open at a pick. It it was a pick em to start, and then it has moved wow. towards Raiders plus one. Well, I will I will say this: we were in uh, the CenturyLink Field uh, working the game, and they kept flashing the Chargers score with the Packers in the first half and then in the third quarter. And I'm going, is that score correct? That it's uh, whatever it was, eighteen to three, twenty one to oh, three. Yeah. As it, I kept going. 
This is the Green Bay team that already has a couple of huge wins over the Cowboys and over the Chiefs. And, the, and, the, and they took over the stadium with all the Packer fans in L.A. because the Chargers play a home game every week because they, they, they have a home game or play a road game every week, even in their own home stadium. Uh, you <laughs> figured the Packer fans took it over, and they never got a chance to wave their green towels or anything, their, uh, their yellow and green towels. So uh, give the Chargers a lot of credit. And, and this will be an interesting game for Thursday night if the Chargers end up being an underdog here in this one. I think it's it's interesting. The Raiders get the win over the Lions, who are pretty good uh, there at home. And, and the Raiders also have a couple of other wins on the season, including against Indianapolis, uh, including going all the way to London and beating the Bears. So the, the Raiders have had a good year. I'm a little surprised that they would not be favored when it's all said and done on Thursday night in this matchup with the Chargers. So that's that's one that we'll talk about and look at a little bit more because at this time, LA, the L.A. Chargers always seem to win games in November and December to make themselves relevant, too, especially in these standalone national TV game settings. Rivers finds a way, they find a way. We'll see. Now you've definitely got – Chris loves the direction of the new offense. Uh, it, they, it, it was only a week. I mean, tell yeah. me – No, they just look completely different once they got rid of Wisenhut. Like, that offense looked like they were disorganized and never knew what they were doing, even though the guy has been there for so long. And then you remove him, and you you, you just promote this young kid. He's like 34 years old, and, and he looked like he took control. I mean, he looked like General Patton over there on the sidelines. <laughs> I mean, he had everybody where he wanted him. He was getting the play call in quickly, and Green Bay just looked like they had no idea what was coming at him. That defense had they stopped buried. everybody, and they couldn't stop them. Yeah, they varied it up. Melvin Gordon became a factor again. Wisenhunt had done what most defenses had trouble doing. He had neutralized Melvin Gordon in his own offense. So he's out. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with the Chargers there. And, and we talked about this before. There's, there's such a long history of the Chargers uh, having been the L.A. Chargers before they were the San Diego Chargers and then back to L.A. playing against the Oakland Raiders in the old AFL. I know I'm older than you guys. But this is the last time, presumably, that they will play in Oakland ever uh, here in this scenario. Uh, so let's see what happens on Thursday Night Football, Chargers and Raiders. Now, we'll close out with this one. It is a massive matchup. You were just at Seattle watching the Seahawks mm-hmm. against the Bucks. Let's, uh, let's close out. I think this is the biggest game of the weekend. The Seahawks going to the 49ers. It, Seahawks getting six points. Like, I wow. understand that the 49ers are undefeated. I get that. They're at home. It's a Monday Night Football game. I get all that. The Seahawks are not exactly uh, slouches here. It get, well, tell me tell me something about this, why why I should not take the Seahawks. Is, is there anything? I, I don't know that I can talk you out of it. You're going to be on the show with me this week on Three yeah. Dog Thursday, and we're going to talk about it on Three Dog Thursday as well. That this is uh, It's a bit surprising that this is a six-point line, uh, that Seattle is that big of an underdog. I know their defense is not great. Okay, this is not the Legion of Boom secondary. Mike Evans was destroying them. Yes. Brother Giannini, if you had Evans in fantasy football, you were likely winning your game with him solely, with just him I did. doing damage for you. So uh, Seattle's secondary is not what it has been. I know the 49ers are at home, but they've lost their leader in the middle of their defense, Quan Alexander, a former Buccaneer, by the way, signed as a free agent with the 49ers, torn uh, ACL, uh, or actually uh, torn, torn pectoral uh, muscle. I'm sorry. Yeah, pectoral. Torn, torn, torn pectoral muscle. A torn ACL for the Bucks last year in October. Now, uh, now tears his pec muscle uh, and is out for the season, season-ending surgery. So he's not there for the 49ers. And and Russell Wilson again is magical at being able to. And now they're going to put Josh Gordon into the mix by Monday night, along with DK Metcalf. I know I'm preaching to the converted here. You guys are in <laughs> SEC country. DK Metcalf from from Ole Miss is big. He's fast. I think Seattle can hang right there with him. So we'll we'll talk bookends of underdogs for Thursday night football and Monday night football. And all the subplots, Richard Sherman against his old team, playing oh, yeah. for San Francisco now, division race. Can the, can the Seahawks hand the 49ers their first loss? They're the last unbeaten team in the NFL. We, uh, we're going we're gonna to see quite a tussle on Monday Night Football, and that'll be a fun one to dissect on Three Dog Thursday, boys. Absolutely. Of course, you can find him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, you are everywhere as far as podcasts <laughs> go. Three Dog Thursday, yes. and, and you've been 
all around the world. I can't wait to be on tomorrow uh, or on uh, Thursday, excuse me. But yeah, everybody go grab the Three Dog Thursday podcast, uh, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, etc. Leave a review. Tell him winning cures everything sent you. I'm sure he will uh, get a kick out of that. And uh, and yeah, TJ, thank you so much for jumping in every week, buddy. We love uh, we love getting to come on with the winning cures guys and talk some underdogs with you guys, Gary. I look forward to being with you. By the way, John Clayton, the professor from from the ESPN <laughs> days. The professor is now knocking around local market in Seattle doing radio. He's on the Seahawks broadcast. The professor is due to be on Three Dog Thursday talking more about Russell Wilson and more about that Monday night game. So I'm excited to have him on. Gary, I'm excited to have you on. We're looking forward to talking lots of underdogs coming up on Three Dog Thursday, boys. Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody go check it out. Go download it. TJ, we will talk to you again next week. Thank you, boys. Be well. All right, we appreciate TJ hopping in here with us. He uh, is always a good time. So, of course, that will wrap up the NFL gambling picks for week number 10. Go to winningcureseverything.com. If you're on Apple Podcast, make sure you hit subscribe, leave a nice review. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit that like button, share the show out, tell your buddies, leave some comments. Go to tunicatravel.com. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at Winning Cures Everything. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.